Axe PvP has had the reputation of being one of the most popular game modes in 1.9 plus PvP. With the game mode this popular, it's no question that some players would do whatever it takes to be the best at it. The fight to become the best has led to the emergences of some of the most dominant players in this category, and this is the history of the top players of Axe PvP. You see, in order to determine who the best was, a tier list system was created to determine what your skill level was in the Axe PvP community, with C tier being the worst and S tier being the best. Over the course of time, the system would change, using numbers instead of letters, but they all had the same basic idea. With that out the way, let's now talk about the era of the top three. From late 2020 to early 2021, Sponker, Swayshi, and OneSpring dominated the Axe PvP community. It was widely regarded that the three of them were equal in skill, so all three of them shared the title of the top Axe PvP -er. So that raises the question, what did these three players do differently to become the best? Bonker was a ruthless opponent. His flashy playstyle consisted of a lot of flicking and styling on his opponents. Despite this, it was clear that he dominated this game mode. If you were far, he would bow you down. If you were close, he would shred you with his sword. If you tried to attack him, you could only hope that he doesn't do this. One very distinctive aspect of his playstyle, apart from his flicking, was his usage of the bow. Rather than to inflict damage, Sponker's main use of the bow was to deal knockback to his opponents, preventing them from getting any hits on him. Because of his aggressive playstyle, he developed more efficient ways to disable the shield, implementing strafes in his shield disables to avoid getting hit. Overall, it was undeniable that Sponker was a top player, and his name will go down in history as one of the founding fathers of Axe PvP. However, there was a player. A player that would utilize strats that would change the game. That player was Swayshi. Oh, you stupid, you stupid. <laughs> Ten, I fucking oh, no. Swayshi was a pioneer. Back when Axe PvP was still in its primitive stages, he made it clear that attacking from behind was possible. He would go on to popularize the backstab, a strat where you jump around your opponent's shield and crit them from behind. His playstyle consisted of a lot of looping around his opponents. He had this iconic move, now called the Swayshi, which instead of critting his opponents from behind like a backstab, he would simply just run around them and sprint hit them, which made them super fast and nearly impossible to counter. Apart from his skill, Swayshi was also super technical created documents on how to beat top players like Sponker and OneSpring, which truly shows his dedication to become the best. His influence is still present today, with backstabs now being a staple in Axe PvP. It was clear at the time that Swayshi was a top player, and now his legacy will reign as one of the greatest in this game mode. Last but not least, we have an Axe PvP icon, who played a large role in popularizing Axe PvP. His name was none other than One Spring. One Spring's fame mostly comes from his famous montage, where he killed famous top PV tiers at the time, such as Dream and Poland. In fact, Killing YouTubers was basically a specialty. As a top Axe PvP peer, he was very dynamic. His playstyle varied. Sometimes he would wait for you to do the first move, but most of the time he would make the first move. In most shield encounters, he would do either one of two things, disable the shield or perform a backstab. His game with all the YouTubers inspired many to start grinding Axe just so they can get good enough to kill a YouTuber for clout. His reputation as an inspiration to many 
will continue to live on through the players who started playing Axe because of him. So where are they now? Well, Sponker sort of retired, focusing more on content creation. Swayshi decided Rocket League was more fun, he's pretty cracked at it too. And Spring started playing games other than Minecraft, he just sort of stopped. Regardless of where they are now, these three individuals played a crucial role in the development of strats used today, and overall, they just made the community more competitive and fun. And this was the era of the top three.